In this video, we will show you how to integrate a design system into WeWeb. When working on a web project, it's best practice for the designer to create a style guide with the fonts and colors that you will be using throughout the project. Why is it best practice? First, it makes it much easier for you to create a web app that has a consistent look and feel throughout the pages. Secondly, when you need to update something down the line, if you need to update the style of a heading or a button, for example, you can make the update at the design system level and it will be applied throughout your project. Let's start by taking a look at the style guide that our designer prepared for us. In Figma, we see that we have a page with the styles, with our colors, in our typography. So the headings, the style of each type of heading, and labels, and body text. Let's start by setting up our typography in WeWeb. In our WeWeb project, in the settings, we can go ahead and add topographies. So here, by default, we have headings, extra large, extra small, large, medium, small, title. This is by default when we create a new project in WeWeb. We have labels, large, medium, small, and text, large, medium, small. So this is a bit different to what we have in our Figma. In Figma, let's have a look here. We have first heading one, and we see that it's inside a, a group, a folder called headings. The font is enter weight 564 pixels, and the line height is 72 pixels. So in WeWeb, the first thing we'll need to do is make sure that we have the font enter. Here. We see we have it and we have it by default. If we wanted to, we could add another font, uh, we could upload a font, or we could import another Google font, uh, let's say Montserrat, for example. And we could choose which which weights and, and styles we wanna, well, which variants we wanna include, and we can make the font default, um, the default one for the design system. If we enable this and I click save, now Montserrat, is the default and here if I choose default it will be Montserrat and if I update the font and make it enter by default again here we go I save and so I didn't need to change anything here because I just had the font family default in any case this is an h1 we see here it's an h1 so let's give it a topography we could pick an existing topography but here we want to create our own so we will delete all the existing ones so we can start from a clean slate and we will create our heading one oops We'll create a new folder called headings and select it to make sure that it matches the group that we have here in uh, Figma. And then the font is enter 564.72. So 64, enter 500.72. All right, let's apply this. Perfect. Now, if I made a change, if I edited my heading, it would update uh, on all the elements that have the heading one typography. Let's keep going and say heading two. Six hundred forty-eight fifty-six. Six hundred, and I should have it in the folder headings. 
There we go. So here we will move it back to heading one and we'll go in our settings to work on, to add all our new topographies. Doing this for all uh, the different styles of topography you have in a project takes a little bit of time, but we recommend that you do that up front because it will save you a lot of time in the future. So the 10, 15 minutes you take at the beginning of the project will save you hours in the future. All right, I spared you the time of watching me uh, add all the headings. Let's have a look at the label and body topographies we have. We see that label here is in the group text and the body topography is also in the group text. So let's start with label large. We can click here in Figma pro tip to copy it to the clipboard and paste it in WeWeb. And another pro tip, if you write it like this text slash, it will create, it will automatically create a folder. So you don't need to go ahead and create the new folder. It will do it automatically. And it will place the label uh, LG uh, topography in that folder. Okay, so we have 16,520. 16,520. Save. And there you go. We have our text folder that we created by just um, we, in this case, we copy pasted it from Figma, but we could also say text slash in label MD, label MD, and it's 14518. And we save it and it was placed in the right folder. I will spare you the pain of watching me add the 14 topographies manually, but I do want to show you why it's very important to spend those 10 minutes at the beginning of your project and the power of spending that little bit of time up front to save you time in the future. So in WeWeb, I have a page with uh, different text elements and we've already linked this uh, H1 to the heading one topography. We can do it for the rest. So we could say that the um, here would be body large. There we go. And here we have an H2. So we will link the topography to our heading two and we will do the same for this heading two. So in the future, if we wanted to change something, like I mentioned earlier, we could decide uh, to change the font. But here, let's say we want to change our headings to, we don't want it to be Inter anymore, we want it Montserrat, and we don't want it to be uh, 48, we want it to be um, 64. And so now, both my H2s here and here have been updated with a, a text size of 64 pixels in the font family Montserrat. I will change this again so you can do it directly here. And we had 48, I believe, in the default. We'll choose the default. That way, when we update our uh, default font, it will be applied here. Let's take a look at our colors now. Back in Figma, we had all these colors with the, if we, we see the hexadecimal here, but we can also select the color to access uh, this information. So here we see it's gray 900. 
here we see it's primary 900. Again, in the settings of your WeWeb project, you can access the colors here. By default, we include a palette of blue and a palette of neutral colors, a palette of gray, let's say, in your WeWeb projects. The neutral palette of colors that we have by default in a new project's design system matches our shades of gray that we have here. So we won't touch those. But we don't have a folder with our primary color. So we'll add those colors, that primary color, in our design system in the project. You'll notice that we have the blue folder in our design system by default. But there is value in having a primary color as well. So we have two options. We could here, we could change the folder and create a new folder and put it inside primary. We'd rather not do that. We're happy that we have the color blue, even though currently our primary color is the same. It does have value to create a primary folder. can copy this here and paste it there. So now we have this same color in the folder blue, and we have it in the folder primary. The value of having it in both places is that Currently, blue is our primary color, but the primary color of our app may change in the future. We may do a rebranding where purple becomes our primary color. So in that case, there are parts of the app that will be linked to the primary color that will be updated to purple, but there may be other parts of the app, I don't know, an ad hoc button that still should keep the blue color that we will link to it. So for example, if we take these buttons, we can link their background color to this primary color, for example. We can do it on, we can select all the buttons and update to this color. And if in the future we decide we want to change this, uh, for example, we can we can have a nice purple instead. So we can copy here the purple and here in the topography, instead of saying purple, we will update the primary because we've decided we are rebranding everything. So this is my new primary and the buttons are updated, but maybe for some reason I want to keep my, um, my, the icons blue, so here I will link to blue 900. There we go. It's a weird example because you would probably want to update this with the primary color as well, but you get the idea um, of the, the power of having a primary uh, color. And if you want to learn more about colors and style, we recommend uh, checking out Material Design's uh, work on uh, the color system. Uh, you have nice information about how to think about your colors. So with a primary color, like we just talked about, a primary variant. So this would be, for example, maybe when someone hovers over the button, you want a variant of your primary color, a secondary color, a secondary variant, and you have um, all of this in detail. Uh, so materialdesign.io, uh, and like if you go to materialui.co, uh, you have you can also access um, palettes of colors. So the popular one is Tailwind, where you could add all of those, uh, you know. Each of these could be a folder in your WeWeb project uh, design system.
So if you don't have a designer, you can improvise and learn about the color system on, on your own time. If you have a designer, even better, because they will have done the work for you uh, in Figma or another design tool. That's it. That's how you create a design system in WeWeb based on the style guide prepared by your designer. It takes a little bit of time up front, but if you are building an app that you intend to scale and maintain for a long, long time, we highly recommend that you do this at the start of your project. It will save you a lot of time and trouble down the line.